name is Nicole Jaspard. I'm an empath and paranormal investigator. I am also an author of a dozen books. Thank you for listening to Haunted Real Connections, where I'll bring you the best mediums and paranormal people the field has to offer. Stay tuned for another great show on Paranormal King Radio. Well, hey guys, welcome back to another edition to Haunted Real Connections here on Paranormal Q Radio. I hope you all can hear us. And uh, I have another great guest to the show tonight. Uh, please welcome Brian J. Lemony to the show. And thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, anytime. I've been following you for a while, you know, oh. and I'm trying to. Yeah, hold on, he's like, oh man, I can't hear myself. So finally, yay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you've done I, a lot, I feel, and so it's like, I know you have a lot to say, but um, you mind telling everybody a, a little bit about yourself, and besides being the, you know, what well, I would say famous, you know, best theater, but you're not getting there, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I do a lot of different things, to be honest. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, uh, I obviously live, in, most people know I live in Canada, and I live in Toronto. And uh, so I've been in Toronto probably for, God, seven years now. Um, I used to live in a town uh, outside of Toronto, about 40 minutes outside of Toronto. I used to live in a town called Burlington. Uh, But I moved here about seven years ago, which was good because the fact that uh, I was closer to doing a lot of different things that I was doing. Um, Yeah, so basically I got into paranormal investigation. Well, I've been I've been around the paranormal since I was about eight or nine years old. And uh, I really discovered that um, I had abilities other kids didn't have, I guess. That was one of my questions, by the way. Yeah. um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I discovered uh, very young that (laughs) I was able to see things other kids couldn't see. And it was determined that I had sensitive abilities. So I was able to, to see, uh, spirits and, uh, stuff like that. So, um, but it wasn't until I was, I was about 15 years old when I had my real very first experience on being touched by a spirit. And so really, um, paranormal investigations for me started about 10 years ago. And I went out with some local teams and just got my feet wet. And I did that for several years. And then I decided to get uh, to go out on my own. And that just happened around uh, the time that COVID started, right at the beginning of COVID, right. actually. And that's uh, <laughs> where Huntophobia was born. Uh, <laughs> that is my brand name of my group. So, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Any shout outs you want to do? Feel free to give me shout outs. <laughs> Shout outs. Well, yeah. Shout outs. Uh, well, the the Huntophobia brand is uh, is uh, my group brand, but I I say a group, but really at the end of the day, it's just me. I've had I've had other members in the last couple of years um, be a part of it, but at the end of the day, it just end up turning turning out to be me, myself, and I. So um, I it's better <laughs> that way. Honestly, it's better that way. It's. Uh, uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, try to set up times where everybody can meet and and stuff like that. And if you're going to do an investigation, you got to re- you got to arrange it with everybody. And sometimes not everybody could be there. And right. so I just felt at the end of the day, it was just uh, better to be uh, me, myself and I. So and that's really how Hauntophobia started. And then obviously yeah. the last couple of years, a lot more things have transpired 
um, that I'm doing now in the uh, paranormal investigation field, I guess. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, no. And everything. So I really appreciate you being here with us. For you. Thank so, you. I appreciate I'm it. I'm stoked. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Well, that's good. You know what? You know, I took a look at your website. It's a really nice website. So I was, oh, I was I really looking forward. Oh, did you? Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> uh, I, I was it. really, I was really looking forward to this uh, as well. Most of my interviews oh, have you. been either, um, they're usually a vodcast. So they're usually oh, on video, yeah. whether it's through YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I've done, I even done an interview through TikTok mm -hmm. as well. And uh, so vodcasts have really been um, a lot over the last, gosh, over the last year and a half. I, I've probably done close to 50, 50 oh, wow. or 60. Yeah. I should have been nervous on vodcasts, but I think because I'm used to being behind the mic. You know? Yeah. So I'm not used to being really out front. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? If it, whatever makes you feel comfortable, right? So. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, I think though, I think some of the reasons why I feel so comfortable is, and you know, there's a lot of people out there that know this about me, but I'm also an actor here in Toronto as well. Oh, cool. And so I'm really used to being in front of the camera, I guess. Oh, yeah, uh, there you. <laughs> I don't really have a problem talking with people and um, I'm a general, generally I'm an open book and uh, I pretty well get along with most people and uh so this kind of come, comes natural to me, I guess. So, so this like acting job, like a day job, or on the side. Um. Well, you know what? I've I've I do a lot of different things. Um. Along with the acting, I I I do have a couple of businesses, and and um. But mainly, um, aiming all my efforts towards the paranormal, and. Uh, over the last year and a half, two years, if somebody were to tell me two years ago I'd be here today, what I'm doing now, I would have probably laughed at them. Right. Because there's been so many different things. That, uh, there's so many things on my plate right now. It sometimes it's a gets a little overwhelming to be honest. But yeah, yeah. yeah I, so I can't believe I'm here hosting a show every week. So like, yeah, oh. well, you know what? It's uh, <laughs> it's it's fun, isn't it? It's I try to make it fun. Yeah, it's fun talking to people, getting to know people in the field, right, and yeah. and uh, I've met so many people over the last uh, oh, year yeah. and a half, especially with doing doing through the lens uh, with Lex. Oh wow! Uh, the vodcast we do every Sunday. Um, I've oh, right, met right. so many different groups and so many people from around the world that. I've made a lot of close friendships with a lot of different people around the world, especially people right. in the UK and the States. Not so many in Canada. I don't know what it is with Canada, well, but... That's what I don't, he was saying. Yeah, you know, like, obviously, I know some groups here in Canada, but they're honestly, yeah. compared to the States and the UK, oh. there's no comparison. Like, I think I can think of... I can think of maybe... <sighs> Only about 10 to 15 teams here in Canada. There's not a lot in Canada. Um, I think a lot wow. of it has to do. I, th I think a lot of it has to do with Canada's a lot more reserved than the states in the UK. To be honest. Right. Or, or, or they're hiding, like King says. <laughs> mm. Or they just don't want to be known. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But going back to what you said earlier about your paranormal experience. What what was your first paranormal experience? You don't mind sharing? No, I don't mind sharing at all. Um, well, obviously, when I was nine nine or ten, I was able to see them, but the, right. they they were always at a distance. Uh, they were never close to me. Um, I had my very first paranormal experience when I was. What's that? Sorry. I say you're you're very lucky as a medium. I experience that all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I ne they never came close to me. But <laughs> when I was about 15 years old, I had my very first uh, experience uh, with one oh, touching wow. me. And uh, it was um, basically the story goes is I had a friend that um, his grandmother passed about three weeks before oh. um, uh, or his grandmother passed away three weeks before I went to go down and see him. So I went down to his place to see how he was doing, see how the family was doing. I was very close to, with his family. 
And so we went downstairs to his bedroom and uh, I was sitting on his bed. He was sitting across from me uh, on his desk and we were just talking. And then all of a sudden uh, it felt like a hand was touching my wrist. Oh, wow. And then all of a sudden it felt like there was a head touched, like leaning or touching my shoulder. And it lasted for about 30 seconds and then it was gone. It disappeared. But the interesting thing about that during when I was being touched, I actually said to my friend, I'm being touched by something right now. And he thought I was obviously he thought I was crazy. Uh, I told him to look to my to my right. And there was an actual indent like somebody was sitting beside me on the bed. Oh, wow. I and that. <laughs> Yeah. Now what, what I know most paranormal investigators out there when they're touched by something, it's usually a cold feeling. This was a very warm feeling, a very loving feeling. And, uh, we determined that it was probably his grandmother because, yeah, because when she was alive, (laughs) she used to do that to me when she was alive, Uh put her hand on my wrist and lean against my shoulder and and stuff like that. So we determined that was that was his grandmother. And like I said, it lasted for about 30 seconds and then it was gone and it didn't happen again, uh, with her. Uh, but, um, that's when I really had my very, very first experience being touched and having one really close to me. So I really, at that time when I was 15 years old, now you got to remember back in those days, Talking about ghosts and spirits and stuff like that was taboo. Thanks. You didn't you didn't talk about that. Uh, now you got to remember. <laughs> yeah, you got to remember this was like the early eighties, yeah. early early eighties. I love eighties though. <laughs> yeah, but. but the interesting thing about and also and just to add to that, you know, if you were to go to a library some or something like that, and we didn't have internet back then, if you were to right. go to the library and try to find books on this stuff. There might have been one or two books, yeah. not like what there would be now. Um, and I old school research. Yeah. And, you know, that is definitely old school research <laughs> because there wasn't a lot. So really, as time went on, I really tried to discover what kind of uh, abilities I, I had or have. And uh, I just grew a, a big passion for the paranormal. But again, going back, there wasn't a lot. Um there wasn't a lot uh, to turn to for what I had or even to, you know, watch on TV or something like that. There just wasn't a lot around. And to be perfectly honest, even today, um, we don't have in can- here in Canada, we don't have many paranormal um, right, yeah. groups on TV. Now, we can watch paranormal shows, but they're mainly from the States or from the UK. So yeah. there's not nothing really for TV wise for even uh, Canadian investigators. Uh, there have there have been some in the past, oh. but haven't lasted. So um, okay. yeah, so really at the end of the day, that was really uh, the start of my um, my journey on uh, learning more and having a, a a huge passion for the paranormal. Right, that's right, and um, so. You mentioned you had abilities earlier. Yeah. Do you think you might have some mediumship abilities? Or- no, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've had, I've had quite a few mediums talk to me about my gifts. Right. And as soon as they meet me, they know right away that I have a gift and I've, from yeah. legitimate mediums, um, from real mediums, yeah, it's okay. you know, we know, we know out there, we know out there in the, paranormal world um mediums seem to be coming out of the wor- woodwork left right and center um but real mediums have actually when they t- start talking to me they know right away you have a gift and i tell them i know and but my my gifts um uh, how do i describe well what the best be way the i strong, the strongest one you think yeah the the best way i can de- to describe or describe it is when I see a spirit, um, and it's usually just a, 
a spirit, nothing negative, nothing, nothing uh, demonic. But of course, I don't like you using the demonic word. But right. when I see a regular like, spirit, um, it's like usually a body apparition or is it like, well, yeah, well, this is what I, see. What, what I see is usually um, it's usually uh, it's almost like a black shadow. Uh, and it's uh, it's like it's usually a full body apparition. And but I don't see facial fe- but I don't see facial features and I usually can't hear them. Uh but I can see them. Um okay. now lately, um over the last four or five months since returning from the UK, uh I've been able to hear them a little bit better. Um so that's what I see. And I can tell between a male and a female spirit by gut. So if I look at one, I go, okay, that's a male. I just right. know by instinct or whatever, you, however you want to say it. I just know. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to something more on the dark side, demonic side, and again, yeah. I don't like using demonic. Unfortunately, I, yeah, there is. Yeah, I think it's overdone and overused. Um, but yeah. I, in my time since I was nine, I've seen about five. And oh, wow. that's over. Now, you got to think about think about this. Like, you know, I'm quite older. So only seeing five in my lifetime so far, that kind of tells you that if you're watching anybody on YouTube and they're seeing demonic every week, I'm it's mostly just, near him, but I, I saw them once. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work that way. You know what I no. mean? And uh, but when I see something demonic, it's usually a uh, black translucent smoke that's moving yeah. around. That's really my abilities. Um, other than that, there's not much else. Um, I'm able to see them. Now, the thing with me is I can't turn it off and I can't turn it on. So if it happens, it happens. Yeah, I hear you now. Sometimes it is hard to turn it off. Yeah. So what if, especially if you try to sleep, and they're all come by me. You know, oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think you have a little bit of her voice and her audience, and that's what I have. Mm, okay. 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 So why is the way you see them? Yeah. Them? You know what? I I've never I've never actually really deep dived into um, if I'm a sensitive. Uh, people just say I'm a sensitive, but I don't know. Um, somebody told me there was a meeting that I can't recall what the name was. She actually told me what I would be listed as, and I can't recall the name. But um, I just go by sensitive abilities because that's what people understand. Right, so, yeah. yeah. So I get asked a lot, like, what's the difference between the psychics and the medium? I have a hard time explaining that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, I think the way I look at it, a psychic is, is somebody that's able to maybe predict the future yeah. um, and or something that's going to happen in somebody's future. A medium is more, to me at least, a medium is more somebody that's able to relate to something it's right now. Right, yeah. Um, and talk to somebody that maybe talk to spirits right now. A psychic would be more something that's maybe down the road. So um, that's how I look at it. I'm, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm a pretty simple guy. I don't. I'm not overcomplicated. So, um, yeah. So yeah. I like to tell them as they're more like postmen. We deliver. We try to deliver messages mm. from the spirit world. Just, I try to say it in a nutshell like that. <laughs> That makes sense. That actually makes sense. I like that. Uh, I like Thanks. that analogy. That's that's good. And then we have some questions popping up. Yeah, we have uh, Bill Bartley, Keith, George, Shannon, and Charles Fulton joining us. And of, yeah, and of course um, myself. <laughs> uh, I love you to see chat. I should have asked you that before. Yeah. But uh, we have some questions. From, uh, let's see. I want to forget anyone. George Shannon, he wants to know, do you pick up on, like, I think you answered it, but do you pick up on negative entities when they are present? D- uh, sorry, can you say that again? You kind of yeah. cut out there. Sorry. Darn, That's it. okay. Um, That's okay. No worries. Do you pick up on any negative entities when they are present? Um, That's a tough, that's a tough question to answer because, um, I would like to say yes, but um, I'm going to say not always. Um, yeah. uh, they really, uh, again, I'll go back to the fact that I've only seen five um, in my in my lifetime. 
So um, and then yeah, that's something that demonic. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's something demonic. Now, when it comes to when it comes to something negative, um, I think that would be along the same lines as something that's not necessarily ni- nice. But I will say that I have seen spirits that um, are just regular spirits, I guess you can say, uh, yeah, that yeah, were we not did. very nice, that were not very nice. Headaches like crazy, especially when there's shadow people present or a negative. Yeah, and you know, it's weird. It's just somebody, like, I could just be out and about somewhere walking down the street and I'll see one coming down the street, walking down the street or however you want to say it. And then oh, yeah. the next day, the next week or so, I, I see nothing. But then we like two weeks later, I'll see something, you know, and it's, it's uh-huh. something that I haven't been able to control. And I know people have tried to help me, I know feeling. <laughs> but I just unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way with me. And and I'll be honest. And I think one of the reasons why it doesn't turn off or turn on or I'm just open myself up to it all the time. I came from a family. Yeah. I came Same from here. a family that was very very against um very against spirits ghosts yeah i was raised um, baptist so i totally you know, understand yeah they, like again i grew up in a time where it was taboo you just didn't talk about it so i actually had a medium tell me once that the reason why i probably are i i don't see them all the time or i can't hear them or i can't see facial features is because of that negative talk that i grew up living through so that is in the back of my head and that is like every time i and i'll be honest every time i see one the first thing i go to is it's not there it's not there that negative talk that uh was given to me as a child growing up saying ghosts don't exist spirits don't exist uh demonic doesn't exist you know and i think somewhat um that relates to why I'm unable to see the facial features or hear them or see them all the time, you know? And I, like I said, I had a medium that she truly, truly believes that that negative talk that I grew up living through is one of the reasons why, uh, one of the reasons why I'm unable to really open up and hear them in facial features and see them all the time, turn it off and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. he, he himself has a question. Uh, how how were you, uh, how, let me rephrase that. How were, okay, I can't talk right now. How, <laughs> <laughs> how was your, there's a word, how was your experience with the paranormal 911 show? The, my experience with paranormal 911? Is that what yeah. you're asking? Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, so somebody obviously looked up uh, <laughs> IMDB, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so uh, Paranormal 911 is... Um, I've heard of that, yeah. Uh, Paranormal 911 is just a reenactment show of true stories that happened to people in their past. And uh-huh. uh, I, played a, I played a cop in that role. And, uh, you, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, when I was going to uh, Nashville about three weeks ago, uh, obviously I was flying there and oh. I got stuck. I got stopped at, uh, the airport, uh, the U S uh, customs and, uh, they took me in the back and were asking me a bunch of questions oh, wow. and they thought I was actually going down there to do some acting because my IMDB is, says a lot of paranormal stuff on it. While it has nothing to do oh. with what I'm doing now as a paranormal <laughs> investigator, that was just a TV show. And, um, but yeah, so, uh, paranormal 911 was great and I love doing it. Uh, it was a good episode. It was about a demonic, uh, it was about, uh, a, um, a house owner being taken over by a demonic entity. Um, oh, wow. and yeah, and, and like, it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. True. What's that? Of- how much do you think of it was true? Like, um, I think to... uh, probably about 70% of it was true. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think uh, the guy that was being possessed saw wings or he had wings. Right. Um, really what it was about, it was about this guy being taken over. He was possessed. The huh. EMTs come to, um, come to the house 
and they <laughs> and uh, they take him away and um oh, wow. but he, they're attacked the 1a emt is attacked and and uh i actually tackle the um the demonic entity that supposedly was but um i think a lot of times it's embellished a little bit so but it was a lot of fun to do it was a great show yeah i'll have to see that now <laughs> yeah i can't remember the name of that i can't remember the name of that episode but um it yeah it was a lot of fun. Like- on Netflix or Paraclips? Um, well, I, you could probably go to YouTube and watch it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Even yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was on TV. It was on the oh. Discovery. It was on uh, ID, Investigation Discovery Channel. Uh, yeah. But a lot of that stuff goes up on uh, on YouTube. Like a lot of my stuff that I've done for TV has been up on YouTube. Everybody's stuff goes up on YouTube. So oh, wow. even TV shows. So. So what would you say would be your uh, best part in that in that show? What would what you like about? What do you mean? Sorry, say again. In general, what did you like about being part of that show? What do I like being a part of that show? Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's one particular part that I liked about, yeah. but I will say this: um, the guy that was playing the demonic. Uh, demonic or the entity, demonic entity, whatever you want to call it. That was pretty cool watching, um, watching uh, get his makeup put on. And it was all done by Cotton. Oh, wow. And, I like uh, yeah. too. Yeah, it was really cool. And the wings they had for him. I don't think there's really anything, oh. a particular part that was really interesting. Like I've done a lot. I've done about 14 TV shows. Oh, wow. So um, I've done a lot. So. There, I've done a lot of different roles. I've been, you know, like a commander on a. Sh- I've been a commander in the navy. I've been a detective several times. I've been a supervisor of a quarry. Oh, wow. um, I was a bomb commander or a bomb squad commander. So I've done a lot of my roles that I've done have been, have been authority roles, like uh, somebody in management or uh, somebody in um, uh, the police service. You know, so it's always been authority roles. I don't know why. I think it has something to do with my the way I look and my uh, my voice. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, my those voice. Interviewing actors is like I always ask, what is your challenging role? What's that? Sorry. What would be your challenging role that you experienced? What would be my challenging role that I experienced? Um, I don't know if any of the roles have been really challenging. Um. I think the I think the one I found maybe most challenging was uh, I played a part. Um, I played a commander in the Navy, uh, oh. and the TV show was called Disasters at Sea. That was probably my most challenging one. Um, I used to do a lot of TV when I was younger. Um, I did a lot of theater when I was younger, so I had a lot of different roles and. Um, I think that would probably be one of my most challenging roles. Uh, right. I thought that would be an actor too. Like I was always involved with plays, school plays. Okay. Um, you know, or bad stage work. Always something to do with the stage. And here I am on a podcast. <laughs> okay, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. You know what? Nothing wrong with that. The pod- podcasts or vodcasts are they're a lot of fun to do because you get yeah. the opportunity to meet a lot of different people. I and- love it. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. I, I enjoy meet it. A lot of interesting people, and like you say, I meet incredible investigators and actors, and the, yeah, I love everybody, even from the Warren Legacy Foundation. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 That yeah. I'm part of as well. Yeah, I like doing. I like doing. Uh, am I a part of? Am I <laughs> part of uh, the Warrens Foundation? Oh, no, I was saying that I'm part of now. <laughs> oh, are you really? Congratulations. Yay. Yeah, Congratulations. Like great That's great. Um, um, it's Chris, right? I believe it's yeah, Chris yeah. McKennell. Um, really, really super nice guy. He's been on our and, show a few times. Yeah. Um, he's actually got um, a podcast on um, a page I, I have on Facebook. Um, I have a um, oh, well. I have a page on Facebook. He called Parapost Network Central, um, where you can go and watch all different kinds of podcasts. 
um, in the paranormal field. And, and some people we have on there, on there are not in the paranormal field. Right, right. Um, but we have all kinds of different kinds of pages uh, or podcasts or podcasts. And uh, yeah, it's called Parapost Network Central on Facebook. And um, we have a couple of shows that are on right now, actually. And uh, it's it's a, it's been a lot of fun, and there, and there's a reason why I built that page, and I'm sure you're going to ask me that later on in this interview. So, I will tell you why I have that page. Yeah, go ahead. For, for here, I'll probably for here, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, the reason I built that page is because I actually have a Facebook Facebook like social media platform called Parapost Network. You can download it through iOS or Android. It's an app. It's uh, for everything under the umbrella of the paranormal. And even if you're an enthusiast, uh, you can join the app as well. It's completely free. It's called Parapost Network, and you can download it through iOS or Android. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, you can also go through your laptop or PC. Uh, But it's just, you know, it's a platform just like, it's almost like Facebook. Uh, but it's for everybody that uh, loves paranormal, whether it's uh, UFOs, cryptids, supernatural, um, obviously paranormal, oh, UFOs, UFO UFOs, and um, and if you're an enthusiast, you can join as well. Now, what I love about this platform is um, it's not like Facebook in this in this respect, or even Instagram or anything like that, or Twitter. Um, basically it's an open community feed. So, uh, once somebody posts, um, a picture or a video or something like that, everybody that's on, uh, the, uh, the social media platform will see it. So it's one community. So once you post somebody, something, everybody sees it. And what I really love about this, um, site as well is, uh, last, last November, uh, we were able to put something on the platform that if you have a YouTube channel, uh-huh. uh, you can actually connect your YouTube channel to Parapost, which uh-huh. means that you would just fill out uh, a couple of things, put in your link, uh, your ULR link, and uh, it automatically uh, goes up onto Parapost. So every time you upload a video on Parapost or YouTube, it automatically uploads on uh, Parapost. So, and the great thing about that is it's going to yeah, give you more cool. views, more likes, and possibly more followers. So, uh, it's great. It's been great. Right now, I think we have close to uh, over 7,000 videos oh, wow. uh, coming from YouTube to Parapost uh, awesome. in the paranormal in the paranormal field. So, wow. and even podcast, even vodcast or podcast as well. Huh. So, if you if your your vodcast or podcast huh. goes on. On YouTube, it will automatically yeah, go to Parapost. Yeah, eventually hit YouTube, uh, other platforms like uh, Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, iTunes, you know. Yeah, and that was the great thing about uh, what we did with that platform. It just it gets you it gets you out there a little bit more, so more people get to know you, and and you can make friends on there, and you can share your stories, you can share your pics, and uh, even okay. videos. And uh, even if you have a short video, you can put it on the timeline. And uh, it's a work in progress. And uh, hopefully by this time next year, Parapost Network will be its own platform, which basically means a platform that's going to be built right from scratch. And like like a Facebook, (laughs) like a Facebook, like an Instagram, Uh like a Twitter, it's going to be its own platform. And uh, people are going to, eventually be able to do uh do live streaming on there as well uh so if you have a vodcast or a podcast you're going to be able to do it on parapost network as well uh Uh, yeah you just you you're either going to be able to go in there live through the platform or you're going to be able to use a third party like Streamyard or uh melon or restream or whatever you use as a uh, uh, streaming platform, you'll be able to do that through Parapost Network. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll have to yeah. That. yeah, 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 um, yeah. It's really, it's, it's been, it's, I tell you, if I knew then what I know now, <laughs> I might have thought differently. Um, uh, but, uh, it's been a lot of work. Uh, 
and we've had yeah, some up and downs. We've had some up and downs for sure, but uh, it's moving along nicely. It's growing nicely, and hopefully by this time next year we'll be at you know a couple of hundred thousand, uh, two to three hundred thousand. I'm hoping. I had a five year uh -huh. plan, and uh, we're far away from that right now, but we're getting there. And uh, yes, people I enjoy. Really I mean, it's yeah. mentioned that our show will be uploaded to YouTube and then Anchor.com and then we go to Spotify and we have other platforms too. We can't recall on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we okay. have so many. So, okay. Yeah, platforms. And that's why I like a website so that I can put everything in my website all at once. Oh, well, there and you go. That's the best way to do it, right? Everything is about me. I've selected everything all in the same one. <laughs> Everything's about oh. Nicole. <laughs> yeah. So that way that would help better people, you know, who want to find. Oh people. yeah, for sure. And and I'm only for podcasts. <laughs> and I'm that's what I'm doing. And time. that's and I think that's why I'm doing what I'm doing with Parapost and and uh Parapost Network Central on Facebook and and you know the right. global ghost hunt <laughs> and and uh and that's also on my plate, the global ghost hunt. So oh, cool. um yeah, so a lot of things going on. And then on top of that having to do my uh, videos because my videos, my, yes, my videos go up on YouTube, um, but they also go up on a streaming service called Paraflix. All right. I've that's where, it, I yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that's where a lot of my videos go to is Paraflix, but I oh. do put up, I do put up videos up on YouTube. Actually, I put up a video last night um, on oh. YouTube. So if people are interested, they can go over to my YouTube channel, and it's called Huntophobia, H-U-N-T-A-P-H-O-B-I-A, -A, Canada. And uh, I got tons of videos up there, and there's going to be more videos coming out. Uh, Octagon Hall and Bobby Mackey should be out next week. And uh, White Hill Mansion that I did in New Jersey back in April. Uh, so it's not really Huntophobia Canada, is it? It's more like Huntophobia International. So, but, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's got some good videos coming up. I wasn't sure if I was spelling it right, Huntophobia. I was going to share it in the chat room. It's, uh, yeah, it's H-U-N-T-A. I spelled it wrong. Yeah, H-U-N-T-A, phobia. It's all one word. Huntophobia. It's not hauntophobia. It's huntophobia. Oh, I see. It. I'm gonna subscribe to you right now. I'm at it. Oh, that's nice. Thank um, you. No problem. And uh, mine is paragraph shit. <laughs> What's that? A little bit of paragraph shit, Nicole. Okay. Yeah, I did a little bit of crafts and turned them all rolled in one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, send me your link later, and I will uh, go over and subscribe. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you. And don't forget to turn on that bell too, because if you don't turn on that bell, what happens is later on down that road, that channel will be taken away from you. Yes, did that. <laughs> yeah, people have to hit the bell because if you don't, um, you'll be considered a dead account down the road. So yeah, I just shared. Yeah. The link. Yeah, I just shared your link. Sorry, oh well, thank you very much. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just guy. released a I just released a video it's last night called called the Haunted Manor. Um, it was a um, it was a museum outside of Toronto, oh, wow. in a town called Grimsby, Ontario. Uh, it was one of the last standing houses in that area oh, when the War of eighteen twelve happened. Oh wow! Yeah, a lot of paranormal in that place, and not very nice paranormal. Just, I'm just that. Were you able to investigate it? You know? Oh, I did, and that's what the video is, right? Oh, so, cool. Yeah, it's yeah, called the Haunted Manor. That. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's and, not necessarily uh, there's not necessarily nice spirits in that place, unfortunately. Mm. So they didn't want me there and they actually um I captured an amazing oh, uh God. piece of evidence on the SB seven. Um I'm a huge SB seven fan for people. Um uh, they I actually call actually... Yeah, they uh, actually call me the SB seven whisperer. I just got um, the new one. Yeah, because of the fact that I capture so much through my SB7, uh, but there was an actual uh, voice that came through that that was very, unfortunately, not very nice, and he was basically telling me to get out of the place. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
I get chills hearing it. <laughs> well, you go over and watch that video. You'll see what uh, what part of the uh, video I'm talking about. And it was a very long sentence too, which is very unusual to get off your SB7. Yeah, and very intelligent. Like. It was a very intelligent and not very nice, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so that would be like that would be like your go-to equipment, right? Just yes. That. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, I I I kind of have three. Um, uh-huh. uh, SB seven is definitely number one. Uh, my voice recorder would Yay. be number two. And uh, number three would probably be obvious for obvious reasons, my camera. And number f- yes. four would probably be the Fleur. Awesome. I haven't used the Fleur yet, so do you mind explaining what it does and everything? Oh, I love the Fleur. The Fleur is amazing. Um, and uh, I just I don't use it a lot, but I use it every so often, and. I tell you, sometimes you can get some pretty interesting stuff on there, but I haven't really captured much off there. I've captured a few shadows, but not a lot. But um, my SB, like, but I could be wrong. Is it similar to the SLS cam or picks No, no, no. The Fleur, the Fleur, (laughs) yeah, the Fleur is uh, really measures temperatures in the room. And it kind of looks like that orange, like you see an orange screen. And then if something comes around, it could it could turn yellow or it could be blue, depending oh. if it's cold. Yeah, so that's the Fleur. You, they use it a lot on, I don't have the gun one. Uh, there's a couple different kinds. There's oh, a, right. one that's like a gun one. But I use the one that's actual an attachment to my phone. And uh, so I plug yeah, it into my phone and. Yeah, I'm able to record and I'm able to, you know, obviously capture audio and stuff like that. I've captured a few things off the Fleur, but my best piece of equipment has been my SB7. Like I've just captured some amazing, amazing thing. I'll give you, I'll give you one little story. Um, there is about four, about an hour and ten minutes outside of Toronto. There's a place called the Streaming Tunnel. Um, a very famous, very famous tunnel here in Canada. Uh, I don't know why it's not on the top 10 list for most haunted places, but it should be. Uh, but I've gone into that place and I've captured some amazing, amazing things. Long story short, there was a little girl that was killed in that tunnel. Um, and there's a few different stories or a few vision, a few different versions of the stories of this tunnel. But the reason it gets the name, the streaming tunnel, because if you light a match and put it against the wall, you'll hear a stream through throughout the whole tunnel. Um, so the, one of the famous stories of this girl, um, she lived in this home. Her parents were getting divorced. Um, it was a very nasty divorce and the father set the house on fire. The girl was still in the house. She got severely burned. She ran down in the tunnel and ended up dying. That's one of the stories. There's yeah, there's another story about a girl being sexually assaulted in the tunnel and her body was uh, set on fire to get rid of any evidence. That's another story. Well, Uh I was in the tunnel and I'm definitely the type of investigator or researcher that is looking for the answers. So we were actually filming in there. And it's out, it's, it's on YouTube, um, especially the clip. Uh, so I was doing an SB seven and I asked, did you die in here? I got a response. Yes. Uh And then the, uh, the second thing it came out was burnt from home. Oh, wow. So really, and I didn't know that happened until we were going through the editing. So really at the end of the day, I think that really answered the, the long or the, uh, the question of years of people wondering what happened there. I think that really kind of answered it. She was burnt from home and that's one of the stories. And, you know, it's funny because I, I was about 300 yards and 300 yards from the tunnel. Because we were trying to look from the, for the foundation of this house because supposedly it's still there. So we were trying to look for the foundation. And I asked a question. Two, in fact. Right. The first one I asked, will you help us find it? Literally seconds later, it said, you'll never find it. We need a body, right? Oh, man. oh, and it came out clear as day. 
And then the next question I said is, is it behind us or in front of us? And it said the other side. Now, what that meant was we were on the wrong side of the road. It was on the other side of the road. And which is funny because the fact that we never found it. So the first one said, you'll never find it. We never found it. So, but it's there. It's there somewhere. So. Yeah, that's terrible. (laughs) So, yeah. So those are my go-tos, I guess. The SB7 is something that um, I always go to. And I know some people, some people don't like the SB7 because that's you know, yeah. noise, but, um, I kind of like the noise. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I had crazy you know. experiences with it too. So, I oh yeah. I yeah. Experience. I love the SB seven. I'm not an SB 11 fan, but I'm definitely, definitely an SB seven fan for sure. I only share my experience real quick. It's real short. Sure. I mean, sure. Short. I'd love to hear it. I kept feeling something playing with my hair all day and I was working at the time, you know, you can't really share your thing when you're working <laughs> yeah but yeah. at least back then this back in the 80s but anyway um so i i told my friend she's my uh partner in crime my stater but anyway we decided to go live with our sb7s okay we had both rolling and all of a sudden i asked so who was messing with my hair today right and so all of a sudden we heard a lady shout stop it frank <laughs> Oh, really? We think it's hilarious now, but back then it was kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the SB, uh, the SB7 is great. Um, uh-huh. uh, it's a, it's an excellent tool. Uh, it, yeah. uh, I've, yeah. I've gotten, I've gotten so much off the SB7 that, um, and you got, of course, you got to be careful too, you know, oh, because yeah. sometimes you can get, you can get radio stations coming through. Um, and you really, really have to, when you're going through your editing of your video, you really have to determine what is really being said or what was coming through, through the radio. And yeah. yeah, And you gotta be really, you gotta be really careful of that or mindful of that. Um, but I've been pretty successful with the SB seven. I sometimes That's wonder, true. somebody told me the reason there are so many voices coming through your SB seven is probably because you have an, an attachment to your SB seven, which honestly wouldn't surprise me. So either that <laughs> or we could be gifted in a way. I think I don't know. It's just my theory. Well, um, you know, it's interesting you say that because I did have a medium tell me once <laughs> because they know I have the abilities that I right, do, right. but they also know that I can't really hear them. That's why they're speaking through the SB7, so I can hear them. So I've actually had a medium tell me that. It's funny you said that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yep. uh, sometimes I pick up on things. <laughs> yep, there you go. Uh, we have another question for you from sure. Charles Ford, uh, Bolton. Uh, he wants to know if you are, if you are against the Ouija boards or seances. Um, uh, and what was that person's name, sorry? Uh, Charles Bolton. Charles, uh, yes, I I will not go near a Ouija board, and I do not do seances. Um, I just don't um, I just don't want to be around that. Uh, I think Ouija boards like are it. yeah. I think Ouija boards, and I know a lot of people out there say it's just a game. Ouija board is a definitely a, a type of definitely a type of channeling. And uh, yeah. I, I think the biggest problem with a lot of people using those boards, they don't open them properly and they don't close them properly. Right. And that is the key. Um, I think a lot of times you can bring through, you can bring stuff out of those boards or manifest something um, that is not good. And I don't believe in it. I won't go near it. And I just want nothing to do with it. Right. To answer your question, <laughs> to be yeah. honest, I'm being honest there that I I want nothing to do with Ouija boards. So thinking, um, they also say that this SB7 is kind of like using a, uh, a Ouija board in a way, but if you, you're opening up yourself, your world. So. Yeah, well, you know what, uh, the, the key to that, and you can do the same thing with channeling through the SB7, especially if you're doing the yeah, Estes yeah. method. If you're doing the Estes method, yeah. that is a type of channeling as well. Oh, I've done the Estes method a couple of times, and what was that I, like? Um, you know, it's 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 nothing different to me other than if I didn't have headphones on. 
you know, and it's kind of the same thing. But um, I think with the SP7 and the way I go about things, especially through my investigations, I'm I'm closing the SP7 properly by saying goodbye, letting them know my intentions, introducing myself at the beginning of doing an SP7 session. So they kind of know they kind of know where I stand when it comes to the SB7 and I'm talking about the spirits. Right. Um, and they know once I shut it off, it's shut off and yeah. we're done <laughs> uh, with the Ouija board. I don't think you really have any control. Um, and I think again, going back to the fact that people are not opening and closing it properly um, is a big key uh, to a lot of people. And I also wonder like, let's say I don't it which I have in the past when yep. I was younger, and then we, we all share it and we forget to close the portal. You know, they, they can come at us 10 or 20 years later and say, oh, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, they could come back then. They can come back 10 years yeah. down the road. They could just be following you That's everywhere and then, me, you yeah. know, preying on <laughs> you one, you know, 15 years later. Either way, either way, um, I just, I just don't like them. And I prefer not to be around them. I have no patience for them whatsoever. <laughs> and the, to be honest. Yeah, and, the, and on the flip side of that, too, um, I think another reason, too, is because the Ouija board can be manipulated. Right, right. And uh, somebody could be moving it, or it could be like an energy going through from your mind down to the planchette moving it um so there are many different reasons why i don't use it but the main one is um i'm not going to want to pull something through that i'm unable to send back right because i don't know how to open them or close them properly and i would never try right. or there never attempt a popular demonic i don't want to say a name but there's a popular demonic supposedly uh yeah so, well we won't really say anything. we won't say that name we won't say, I know who you're talking about. It we won't say that name. Old grandpa for that matter. You know. <laughs> you know I, 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 yeah. I just, uh, I just, uh, like I said, I just prefer not to um, have anything yeah. to do with them. Especially on Halloween. <laughs> well, that's a whole different story for, hey, yeah. listen, I'm not going to knock anybody else for doing it, but they should understand what they're doing before they actually do it. So. Uh, I think everybody, well, not everybody, but I think a lot of people are guilty of it, so. Uh, living, living, right? But anyway, he has <laughs> I want to get to before the end of the show. I already have oh, almost an hour already. But, uh, yeah, it went by quickly, oh, didn't it? And uh, we didn't even get to talk about Global Ghost Hunt. Oh, let's do that real quick. Okay. So for people that are in the room, uh, if you haven't heard of this, uh, I'm, I'd be surprised <laughs> because it's all over. It's all over Facebook. It's all over TikTok. It's all over yeah. everywhere. Um, Global Ghost Hunt is uh, coming May of 2023. It's going to be a 10-day event. And if you have a paranormal... Oh, is it? Um, and, w and, you know, the funny thing you say about that is May 5th, our event starts on the 4th. May 5th is the start of the thinning of the veil. So it's okay. actually going to be really, really good for people that are joining. So Global Ghost Hunt, uh, we do have a website. It's uh, www.globalghosthunt.com. You go over there, and if yeah. you have a paranormal investigation team, you can register your team. Obviously, you're going to want to have a location. So okay. you find your location. You sign your location with your registration form. And uh, you can be in this event next year. It's going to be going on for 10 days. Uh, we're going to be streaming. We're going to be streaming live all over the globe. So if you're looking to get your team noticed, recognized, uh, maybe uh, get maybe more people over to your YouTube channel um, or wherever you're, wherever you are, Facebook or wherever. Uh, this is what the Global Ghost Hunt is going to be about. It's going to be, oh, wow. be about helping the teams grow and uh, seeing different teams from around the world and their different skills and their different techniques on how they investigate. Yeah, you can cool. learn from other investigators. And one of the main reasons why we did it as well, or at least I did it, was because of the locations. 
Right. Um, there's a lot of locations around the world, around the globe, that are being torn down for whatever the reason may be. So really, at the end of the day as well, this is to get um, the locations noticed because a lot of these locations take a lot of money to run. And yeah. so we're hoping that not only will the teams get uh, their 15 minutes of fame, but they will the locations will get that too. So then the locations can start being booked and have more people come to their haunted location so they can run it properly. They can keep it open and it doesn't get vandalized or get torn down or yeah, get sold. <laughs> You know, so really this was about the teams and yeah. pres preserving the uh, haunted locations around the globe. Excellent. Speaking about locations, I want yeah. to get to Keenan's question real quick. He wants to know, uh, so how did you come across that location? What location is that? Um, Keenan's location, I wasn't sure what he meant. Uh, the streaming tunnel? Sorry. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Okay. The, um, oh, you the can... manor. The manor. The manor. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Sorry, it's funny how the it's funny how that happened because uh, Grimsby, Ontario, uh, it was the main center point of the War of eighteen twelve, and this town, this town, uh, lost over ten thousand civilians in this oh. town, and a lot more soldiers died as well. Um, and like I said, the uh, the Nellis Manor was the last standing house, one of the last standing houses in this town. And how I came across it was I was called to do an investigation in this town at a store, believe it or not, oh, wow. a business. Um, so while we were waiting to do this investigation, we started driving around uh, looking at Grimsby while well, we came along this house called Nellis Manor. And I'd heard of this place before. Huh. So we actually went up and spoke to the, to the guy that was uh, taking care of the place and he told us he had paranormal groups coming in there all the time. And that's how we found out it was haunted. So oh. um, unfortunately, this was in the middle of COVID. So they weren't really doing allowing anybody to come in. So yeah. after COVID was finished, I called them and asked them that if I can come in and do some filming. Because the actual full video is up on Paraflix, but there oh. is a video on YouTube as well. I have two different videos. Um, well, it's not really too different. The, the full videos, uh, not on YouTube, but, um, the, uh, a, a great deal of it is on YouTube. Like most of it is on majority YouTube, but the, it, the majority, thank you. The majority <laughs> of it is on, uh, Paraflix, but the video that I have up on YouTube is great as well. And that's where that, uh, remarkable capture came through the SB seven. Uh -huh. And that place is definitely haunted. Definitely, definitely haunted, and um, they they um, they do tours. So if people are in the uh, Grimsby area, you can go out and have a tour. And if you have an investigation team, you can go out there and investigate that place too. And uh, they don't charge, as far as I know, they don't charge. And uh, uh, or they might ask for, a, yeah, they might ask for a donation fee. Right. But um, because my video is going up on Paraflix and it was going to be worldwide. Um, I don't think that's, I think that's the reason why they didn't charge me, but I don't think it's very much. I think it's like 20 bucks or something like that. Oh, well, it's nothing, okay. it's nothing outrageous. I can't recall what the price is. Don't quote me on that because I don't want people coming after me and saying it's not 20 bucks. It's a hundred bucks. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the price is, but I know it's not very expensive, but most of that money goes back into the Nellis Manor. So, um, oh, wow. it doesn't go to anybody's pockets. Right, that's cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. No. Closing, would you like to share before we wrap it up? No. Um, well, I'll let people know they can find me on YouTube, Huntophobia Canada. Um, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on wow. Twitter and uh, with the uh, Huntophobia uh, Parapost Network. You can download it through iOS or Android. Uh, through the Lens with Brian and Lex is on YouTube every Sunday at four o'clock. Eastern. Um, we interview up and coming paranormal investigation teams. So if you haven't, if there's anybody in the room that has a team and they want to come on to our vodcast, we can bring you up and get people to know you. 
Yeah, well, I plan to. I plan to. Oh, thank you. So once you uh, once you message me, um, if you can find me through uh, Facebook, Brian Maybe. John Laverty, message me, and we'll get you up on the uh, the show. And we've helped awesome. teams get to a thousand subscribers. Oh wow! And uh, because that's what people want, right? So they yeah, want those yeah. thousand subscribers. Yeah. So then they can go live and then get the hours and get monetized. So, uh, yeah, so we bring up and coming teams on the show. And uh, so people can get to know them, get to know their channel, go over and watch their videos, and hopefully they'll subscribe. And that's uh, Through the Lens with Brian and Lex. It's on Sundays at 4 p.m. through Facebook and through YouTube. And uh, it's a great show. It's a lot of fun. My uh, my co-host, he's from uh, the U.K. Uh awesome. Yeah, so uh, it's a lot of fun. So, is there anything else that's going on with me? I th and then obviously the global ghost hunt. If you want to register your team, you just go over to uh, www.globalghosthunt.com. You can register your team, put your location in there, and even if you have a haunted location, you don't have a team. Sign up your haunted location. We My might be able to find you a team, or you can find yourself a team and. Uh, your team would still have to register, but uh, let's yeah, get uh, Global Ghost Hunt. Yeah. Hopefully one day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just to let you know, it's May uh, 4th to the 14th, and they then October then October 19th to the 29th. Those awesome. are, it's it's happening twice next year. Awesome. Would That's it. Like that? And uh, any, any, real quickly, any plans or investigation on Halloween? Um... I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I got a lot of videos to go through and I have, uh, I have 11 investigations to go through that I did in the UK in March. Oh, wow. I was in the UK in March and I did That's 11. My bucket list of all places. Yeah. Yeah. So I did 11, 11 investigations in 14 days. Oh, so wow. I got to go through all those videos as well. So I got a lot of videos to be editing. <laughs> well, speaking of bucket list, what would be on your bucket list? Ooh, um, it's good. It's this is a good one, um, and I think people will, will agree with me. My number one spot that I want to go to is Suicide Forest in Japan. Ooh, yeah, I want. <laughs> yeah, that's my number one place I want to go to. Um, yeah. There's a lot going on there, and I'd just love to be able to walk through that forest and see what I can see and. I, hopefully I could hear something, but it would be an amazing place to investigate for sure. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys um, for joining us. Thank you, Brian, for your time and everything for being part of our show. Well, thank, thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. I uh, appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. And um, next week will be my, well, post-Halloween show, my solo show. So if you guys have any suggestions you want me to talk about, bring up, just let me know. And uh, everybody says great show. We did tonight. And uh, yeah, thank you, Brian. You're very welcome. Man. It was a pleasure meeting you. Great. Thank you. Y'all have a great night. Stay safe out there. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hi, my name is Nicole Jaspard. I'm an empath and paranormal investigator. I am also an author of a dozen books. Thank you for listening to Haunted Real Connections, where I'll bring you the best mediums and paranormal people the field has to offer. Stay tuned for another great show on Paranormal Key Radio.